Firefly Blue Ghost, separation confirmed. This is CBS AOS, stand by. We have acquisition of signal with a Blue Ghost landing. My name is Hung Annie Vo Cohen. I am a flight director for Blue Ghost Mission 1. I'm also an assembly integration and test engineer. I'm Lauren Arkell and I'm a flight controller on console for Blue Ghost Mission 1. So this weekend we performed translunar injection. Um, we all refer to it as TLI. It was a critical burn, one of our most critical, and its purpose is to get us on our way to lunar orbit. It's a quick one, very quick burn, but it takes a lot of preparation. As a team, we prepare for these burns by having our mission sims earlier on before the mission actually started. So we went through a lot of the burns, where to start in the procedure, we wrote the procedures, we reviewed the procedure, we correct them every time. As we learn, we just keep improving and doing better on the burns. TCM-1 is our trajectory correction maneuver. That's a really quick burn, and that'll set us up so that we're in the best place we can be for our next burn, which is LOI. So a little comparison, um, the correction maneuver was I think around three seconds and LOI is, is over four minutes. So this will be our longest burn. It'll be a really good test on our system. LOI, our lunar orbit insertion, is our maneuver to where we pull the brakes basically to get into lunar orbit. So as we swing out from TLI, we're gonna burn to go into lunar orbit. Section 34 complete. We'll resume on section 35, step 35.1, two minutes five. So about T minus 20 is when the slew starts. The slew kind of puts us into the angle where we need to start burning. Our burns happen at specific attitudes, and the attitude is kind of where the spacecraft is facing. And so we nominally are in sun track, which means we have maximum like sun exposure coming in, so we're charging. And for a burn, we have to do a slew which uses our ACS thrusters to change our attitude so that we're pointing in the direction we want to for the burn to adjust our orbit as needed. Leading up to Gonogo Pole, I usually give the team a little bit of time in advance, but at that point to tell them like, hey, we have a burn coming up, get your criteria ready. Every team, every subsystem has their own list of what they're looking for at each point for a Gonogo Pole. Ground software? Go. Flight software? Go. UBI? Go. GNC? Go. Fido? Prop, TCS, systems, C, FC. Yep. All consoles are go for burn. So I usually stand up because I'm a little shorter than the computers to look at each team, each console to say, we're going through the go no go poll now, starting with the order. We go through the order of the room. It's consistent every single time, and the team reports go or no go, and I skip on to go to the next one for that subsystem to review if they're missing something, need a little bit extra data, need a moment to analyze before they give their confirmed go. And then I circle back to them, wait, and then once the teams all go, the entire team has to approve we're go. Then we go and we just keep going. If not, then we have to figure out what's next. We might have to abort, we stop, we, we replan everything. So we have to figure out what we do then. That is the moment that we're preparing to fire. At T minus five, the tanks press. And during that time, the team does a quick analysis to see are we pressed at the right pressures in order to actually burn properly and have the right mixture ratios and everything for the engines. Once they get the go, no-go pole there, we are a go. It is autonomous at that point. And at T0, we're firing, we're, we're going. So our nickname given by Systems is the Alley Oop Sisters. Um, I didn't watch much basketball, but I believe it says that one of us sets it up for the other person to slam dunk in to the hoop. Um, so I tend to set her up with the commands and everything, and then she slams dunk it in, and then we just keep going back and forth nonstop. Yeah, so I'm partnered with Annie. She's my FD. I love working with her. Uh, I've learned a ton from her, and I think we match each other's energy and knowledge well. She has an overload of spacecraft knowledge uh, and Firefly knowledge from all her testing days and being on the 
integration and test team for Firefly. So that is super helpful. And then I come from more of the ops role, so the like procedural planning. Uh, I think I kind of bring that to the team, so it's a really good match. Lauren is my flight controller on this mission, so we have been paired together since the beginning, since Mission Sims. Um, and she's absolutely incredible, and I think we made a really good match together. Some fun things that we learned on mission during the quiescent ops when we were talking about the most randomest things. We both grew up in New England. She grew up in New Hampshire, I grew up in Massachusetts. And so one night, MD, our mission director, was asking, what do you guys want? And I said, I want Duncan. And she was like, only some people like Duncan. I'm like, that's right, New Englanders like Duncan. So we got our Dunkin' Donuts that day. It's really easy to get focused on something in ops and be said in the moment, especially with these like stressful procedures, like the burns we're preparing for. And whenever we're in a stressful situation or feel a little, a little tense, we'll like reach over and, and touch each other's arm. And it's just like a reminder, it's like a different sense and reminder like, oh, we're in the room, we're doing operations, like a good, a good check for for where we are and, and keeps us keeps us grounded. Uh, one of the funny things that Lauren does on, on ops is she fist bumps me every time we do something great and it's this nice little like, yeah, we did this. So it's like very like enthusiastic, like helpful when the moments are like hard or we have time where it's like it's critical. It's been like, go, 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 go. And then at the end of it, she just turns, she fist bumps and it's like, yeah, we did it. Working with her closely, I've gotten to know her personally and learned a lot about her. I've also She's given me a lot of advice, um, being a woman in STEM. She's a great role model. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get a set. <laughs> for Laura and I, it was an easy trust to make. I always feel like as a woman that's been in industry for a little bit longer, I like to reach out a little bit to help other women engineers coming in, starting out the company, because I know what it's like to be in that position. Um, but this year was also a little different for me. I was coming back from having a baby, so I was very like, short on my time and very like focused on like get my job done and go home. But she was also signed to work on the RackSat, which is AIDs, so I actually get to help her with that and kind of build that relationship, build the trust and help each other there. One thing that I've noticed is like she is the most dedicated mom and loves to talk about her daughter. She like always shows me pictures. She's like, oh Amelia did this yesterday and I I love it. I love like being able to include that personal moment since we're working so long on these shifts. Um, it kind of like brings you back to the moment as well. Sometimes if you're locked in on something else and it helps a lot. So I think for a call sign, I would call her The Rock. <laughs> Annie The Rock would be her call sign. My call sign for Lauren would be Duncan because in our alley-oop uh, dynamic, she is the dunker and she's also from New England. I am super appreciative to be partnered with Annie. I think in ops there are a lot of stressful moments and then a lot of moments to celebrate. So. It's really great to have someone that I can communicate well with and I've kind of now built a bond with that I think will never go away.